In this example, we're going to look at how blocking versus non-blocking assignment affects the behavior of a small memory array implemented in Verilog or System Verilog. So the code for the memory array is shown on the left. We've got our signals that are coming, going into and coming out of the memory array, and then the memory itself is implemented by this always block, and there are basically two things that can happen on the positive edge of the clock. One is that if WE, which stands for write enable, is 1, then we're going to take whatever value is on the DI or data in input and put it into the memory at the address specified by A. And the second is that whatever is in the memory location specified by A is going to be put on to the DO or data outline. And to make this concrete, we have an example where we've got a four entry array and we've specified some values that are in there at the start and to begin with we're going to be looking at a case of blocking and you can tell this because we've got a standard equal sign here which is the blocking operator in Verilog and the blocking operator tends to behave more like what most people are used to if you've had experience with programming where things appear to happen in sequence. So to start off with, we're going to go down to our waveform here and start off at the very beginning. Our address is 1, and so we're interested in what the data output is. And we can see that the write enable is 0, so we're not writing anything. So the only line that matters is the d out equals mem of a. So for this, we can say that, well, if we go look at address 1 in our array, that's got a value of hex. 0e and so the data out would take on that value. And because we have both of these lines in a always block that only happens on the positive edge of the clock, we can say that nothing is going to happen again to the output until the next positive edge of the clock. So even though address and data in change in the middle of the clock, in this particular case, nothing could possibly happen until the next rising edge of the clock on the output. If the data out assignment was put outside of the always block, then this could be different. So now we're on to the next clock edge. And so now our address is 3. And if we look, we see that write enable in this case is 1. And so when we're going through this, we now need to consider both of these statements. And so with blocking assignment, it essentially implements the hardware in a way that it appears as if these were executed in sequence. So it would appear as if first the memory at A got the value of data in, which in this case is 2, 2, and then whatever value is in mem a would then be used in the second statement. So that would mean essentially that d0 would then get the value of mem a, which has just recently been updated to 2, 2. So that means two things are happening in this case. So in the first line, we're updating the value of mem a to di. So that means address a which is 3 is becoming the data in value which is hex 2 2 and the data out because we're using blocking assignment here is taking on that same value and so the output here would be hex 2 2. So that takes care of that address. Moving on to the next clock edge we've got the address it changes to 0 and if we look we see that write enable is not true. So we're not writing anything. So again, we're just reading. So if we go look at address 0, we can see that this has a value of hex 0f. And then finally, we look at our last rising edge of the clock. Again, write enable is 0. So we're not writing anything. And again, we're reading the value. And so in this case, we're reading the value of address 3. We go look in our memory array and see that address 3 is hex 2 2 from the previous write, so we again read out 2 2. So that's an example of how it behaves with blocking assignments. If we switch to non blocking assignment, which we can tell because we now have this less than and equal type of arrangement here, then while many things will remain the same, it's a little bit different in a certain case. So to start off with, we're again going to look at the first address, and this is where a is equal to 1, and like before, we're not writing anything, or write enable is 0, so we're just reading from address 1, which as before is equal to hex 0e. 
And now on the next rising edge of the clock, we see that write enable is one. And so this is where things might change. And so with non-blocking assignment, we essentially evaluate everything on the right hand side first before assigning anything to the left. So we would evaluate and figure out what DI is. And so DI here is hex 2, 2. And at the same time, we're going to look at what mem at address A is. And so address A is 3. And currently, the value at address 3, or entry 3 in this array, is 0C. And so we're essentially going to have looked at or inspected both of the things on the right-hand side first, and then at the same time, assign both of them to the left-hand side. So that means that mem, in this case, 3, is going to become the hex 2, 2, and the data out is going to become the 0C. So the data out here is going to be the hex 0C, and essentially at the same time, the entry in address 3 is going to become hex 2, 2. And so this looks different than the blocking assignment case. Moving on to the next positive edge of the clock, we're not writing anything, so this is going to be behave like it did before. So we're going to look at address 0. Address 0 contains hex 0F. And then for the last rising edge of the clock, we go look at address 3. And we see that from before, address 3 was changed to 2, 2. So we are now going to read out the new value of 2, 2. And in these last two times, or these last two clock edges, we didn't have any write, or the write wasn't enabled, so we didn't have to worry about this. So this example shows how blocking versus non-blocking assignment can impact the behavior of a system Verilog implementation.